Welcome all my dear students to this lecture of CS302 data structures. In this lecture, we are going to see the second module of our syllabus, which is uh, linear data structures chat. We have already seen two types of uh, data structures, linear data structures, that is array and linked list. And today we are going to start with the third one, stack. And we are going to see why stack is known as an ADT. Why it is first of all known as a linear data structure. Next, why it is known as ADT or abstract data type. And then the implementation use of stack in practical life. And then implementation of this stack using array. So I have divided this lecture into two parts. In this lecture, we are going to see these parts. And in the next lecture, we will be seeing the linked list representation of stack. So let us start with what is stack. So all of us are familiar with these two photos. The one is a pile of books kept one after the other. And the other, another one is a pile of plates kept one after the another. Now what is the property of these two photos or two, these two pictures? The property is that, so if I mark it like this, so this is book one. So this is book one, this is book two, three, and four. Again, if I look at the plates, this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So what you should observe is that I have marked the books from the button to the bottom to the top. So the first book, when we are keeping the books, if you remember that when whichever book we are having at hand, we keep it at the top. So this is my top, respectively for the pile of books. And this is my top plate. So whatever we are having at hand, we keep it. And then we take another one and keep it at the top of the previous one. So when I have kept, first when I have kept, book one so this was the only book in my uh, this was the only book which was happening so i kept it so book one and then i took book two and kept it on top of book one then i took book three and kept it on top of book two and this process continues until i'm exhausted with the number of books or i'm exhausted with the number of uh, plates so what is the property we can see that the one which is taken at last or the one which is kept at last will be the first one to be removed because if i want to get the book two i have to first remove book three and book three was the last book which i kept in the other way you can also see that the book which has been kept at first will be the last one to be removed so this is the first book which I have kept and when I am going to remove it, this will be the last one to be out. So the property is same in case of a pile of plates and this property can be implemented in a computer system with the help of stack. So stack is a data structure where the first element which is put in the stack will be the last one to be laid out. So that's why stack is known as LIFO. What is LIFO? So LIFO means so this is last in first out. So the last element which is put is, will be the first one to be removed. This is first observation which we are having. And there is a second observation also that the elements if we see the example of the book, the book which is removed at first is at the top of this 
file. So this file now we can also call it as a stack of books. So the element which is at the top of this stack will be the first one to be removed. So because book four is at the top of this stack of books, so it will be the first one to be removed. Similarly, if I come to the stack of plates, then plate six is at the top of this stack, at least at the top of this pile of plates, so it will be the first one to be removed. So we can also write it down like this. The element at the top of stack will be the first one to be removed. So these are the two important properties of stack. We are going to see it in a more formal way in the next, in the next part. One is whichever element will be the first one to be kept will be the last one to be out. And the second one is that whichever element is at the top of the stack will be the first one to be removed. So let us go for a formal definition of stack now. Now let us start with the properties of stack one by one. The first property which I have mentioned is linear data structure. So why it is a linear data structure? So if we take the example of the, of the books, of the stack of books, what do I see? So here, let me draw it like this. Let me consider it to be book one, book two, book three, and book four. Now here, if we have to access a particular element or particular book, we have to move in a linear fashion. So before accessing two, we have to first access four, then three, then two, and then one. So there is a sequential ordering of the book. Don't look at one, two, three, four. It can be any values. But the memory locations which are assigned to each of these books is sequential in nature. Sequential doesn't mean that it has to be continuous. It can be continuous or it can be non-continuous. In case of a continuous memory location, the sequentiality is maintained with the help of the continuous memory location. But if you are talking where the memory is non-continuous, then it will be maintained with the help of some links, which we have seen in case of a linked list. But what is meant by a linear data structure? Linear data structure means whenever we want to access a particular element, we have to access in a linear or a sequential fashion to reach that particular element. So this is meant by the linear data structure. Now, if we come to the topic of abstract data type, now when we are going to look at the algorithm of stack, we are not going to pay any attention on how the stack will be implemented in any programming language, just like a linked list. So if we remember in case of a linked list, when we are writing the algorithms, we are not concerned about how linked list will be implemented. Only when we started implementing a linked list, we saw that it is implemented with the help of structure. The so linked list is implemented with the help of structure. So like that, whenever we are trying to write the algorithm for stack, we are not going to get concerned about whether how we are going to implement it. Are we going to implement it using array? Are we going to implement it using linked list? We don't know that. We are simply going to write the algorithms and during the implementation time, we are going to decide what will be the underlying data structure for it. So that's why it is an abstract data type. Now, if we come to the property of LIFO, so now let us come to the property of LIFO. LIFO, I told that LIFO means
means if we want to remove a particular element from a stack, then we say that by this property, the last element which was put into the stack or the last book or the last plate which is put into the stack will be the first one to be removed. So four is the last book or plate number which is K. So if we remove it, if we, we have to first remove this and then we have to go in this top down fashion. By viewing this, we can tell it is in a top down fashion. And then we have to remove the first element which was K. So that is why it is known as LIFO. Sometimes students make a mistake that instead of writing a LIFO, they write philo. Philo means first in last term. Though both meaning are same, even though both actually mean uh, same naturally, last in, first out, and first in, last out, both are same thing, but you should never make the mistake of writing philo instead of lifo, because this lifo has a significance. What it means is that, it means that whenever we start putting the elements in a stack, we do it with the help of the top. So there is a pointer, so that is the next point, which is called as a top pointer. And whenever we put the last element in a stack, that becomes the top element. So in this case, four is the top element in the stack. So that's why the term LIFO means that Whichever element will be the first element, with last element in the stack will be the first element to be out or in other words, the last element will be at the top of the stack. So that is the top element. The fifth important property of stack is that here addition and removal happens only from one end. So let us do it again with the help of the same example. So first I am putting book one. So when I put book one, there is nothing in the stack. So now this becomes my top element. So this is my top element. Next, when I put book two here, then top element is no longer book one, but now the top element is Book two. So this is my top element now. Now this process keeps on continuing until we have exhausted my space. That means, what is the exhaustion if we are keeping a pile of books? The moment when we feel that the pile of books cannot be kept any further, it may fall down. So that is the exhaustion period. That is the overflow period, that means no more books can be kept. If we talk about the memory representation, then what happens? The moment the memory spaces which are available gets exhausted, that is there is nothing more to be added, that is there is not, no more available space for the elements to be added, we reach the end and that is the overflow. So this process keeps on continuing like that. So until you specify in, or there is an overflow condition. Anyone? Now what is happening? Whenever we are inserting the elements, it is happening at one end, that is at the top. So whichever element, so if you think the top is the only place from where we can insert a book. Also, if we want to remove the book, so this is my nth book and when my nth book is that, so what happens? My top is naturally here. Now, if I want to remove a book from this stack, first one which will be removed is in. So once I remove in, then my next element is in minus one. So once this element is removed, so this space becomes empty. So this is out. 
n is outside now of the stack then what happens naturally my top element moves from here and goes to this place so whenever i remove an element from my stack whenever i remove a book from my stack the pointer will move to the next one because that is in next to be removed so you see removal also happens only at the top side of the stack so that's why this pointer is known as a top because it represents in visually if we want to represent it using the example of the book stack of books a stack of plate or a deck of cards whatever the removal and the insertion always happen at the end where the top pointer is pointing so these are the five important properties of stack if you have been told to write about stack in your exam simply a short note or something like that this all this five points should be mentioned now let us see practically how stack is used in a computer system let us see this example it's a simple uh program where inside main i'm printing something in function main and i'm calling function 1 now after calling function 1 i have written inside function 1 and i'm calling function 2 and inside function 2 i am calling inside function Now this is a very simple program, but how this program is actually executed? So let us think of it to be a stack. This is known as a system stack, which a operating system typically maintains in it. So this is known as a system stack. so we don't know the user have no idea what is happening inside but internally it happens like this so this is a system stack now in say system stack whenever we are at this stage main so whenever we are inside main this line gets executed and whenever function 1 is called so main is the calling function and function 1 is the called function whenever function 1 is called the execution of the main function is temporarily halted that means until and unless function 1 completes its execution main is stopped interrupted so what happens when this happens main is pushed into the system stack what does it means it means that system stack keeps track of the functions which are yet to be finished or which are yet to be processed completely now whenever i come whenever we come to function 1 then this line inside function 1 gets executed but then again there is another function call which is known as function 2 so once function 2 is called what happens the execution of function 1 is halted and function 1 is pushed into the system stack so function 1 is pushed into the system stack then we come to function 2 inside function 2 this line is executed and when this line gets executed the control returns to the calling function that is function 1 function 1 was the calling function and function 2 was the called function so once the called function execution gets over the the uh, control moves back to the calling function when the control moves back to the calling function then this particular function is removed from the stack so this was the top of the stack so what is there at the top of the stack function 1 so whenever the control moves from the currently executing process to the system stack then what happens the system stack checks for the first the first function which is top of the stack and it removes that so if we remove this one function 1 if we remove function
we remove the top element also from here and when we do that top now points here so after after we come here so function to control moves here and then there is a brace so once the brace is there that means from here the control moves back to the main function now when the control moves back to the main function then the system stack removes again the top element from the stack which is main so now the top there is once this main is removed then there is nothing in the stack and top becomes zero or null whatever you can tell so top is not pointing to anything so we can tell it is pointing to none so this is how the operating system keep keeps track of the functions which are yet to be executed completely stack is used in any kind of function call in a normal function call or in a recursive function call so this is the practical application of stack in a computer system whenever a function gets called that function's execution is temporarily halted and is pushed into the stack whenever the control returns to the calling function from the called function that particular calling function is removed from the stack and the execution keeps going now let us see how we can implement stack using array before we start with the array implementation of stack now any data structure has some operations associated with that we have seen in case of a linked list array that there are insertion deletion traverse search access operations so what are the operations which are associated with the stack so the operations allowed on stack are three operations so the first one is known as the push operation so what is push push is equivalent to the insertion so it is equivalent to insert that means adding new elements to the stack the push operation is operation for adding new elements in the stack so let me write down that adding new elements now irrespective of the implementation using array or linked list the basic function names remains the same the second operation which we have is known as the pop and pop is equivalent to the delete algorithm or the delete operation so what do delete do delete means or the pop operation means removal of top element from the stack see i have written here top element because as i have mentioned in my last part that remove addition of new elements to a stack or removal of elements from the stack takes place only at one end of the stack and that is known as the top so similarly here i have missed that point so this is basically adding new elements to the so i will just remove this to the top of the stack adding new elements to the top of stack and removal of top element from the stack the third operation which we have is known as the peak now what is meant by peak peak means display display the top element so peak doesn't mean the whole list will be displayed to you pick simply means 
display the top element so display the top element of the stack so these are the three operations or these are the three popular operations which are done push pop and p if we talk about the access operation if we talk about the search operation then access will always gives us the top element because we have to start from the top element always now if we talk about the searching then yes you can search searching will be similar to what we have done if you are implementing the stack using array then the searching will be similar to searching an element in an array if you are implementing stack using a linked list it will be similar to searching an element in a linked list so the complexity of searching will be order of n because it is similar to searching in an array or list but these are the three so with every data structure certain operations are defined and with stack these are the three operations which are defined now let us go and see the array implementation of this so this is the first algorithm this algorithm is my push so if you want to implement push push will be typically be something like this because i am calling the push function with my value so implementation like linked list you can have you can either pass this as argument or you can take this as a input within the push whatever you can do it in a multiple ways so my push function has the input the array stack because i am doing it with the help of array so i am writing the array stack and the element to be inserted which is the value which will be given and the output will be the array stack so remember for every algorithm of every topic you should have the input and the output because that is the primary requirement of writing an algorithm now let me draw it now typically when we draw a stack we draw it in a reverse way like this so my stack is something like this now where is top initially when we are keeping top it will be null now see this is again the implementation issue how you are going to do it that should not come in the in case of an algorithm what should come is that if you are looking for a overflow condition so overflow means suppose i have declared my stack to be of size so stack is of size in now if i want to insert the n plus 1th element in this stack it will be reporting me a overflow now you may tell me ma'am if the maximum size is n why you are writing max minus 1 because in this case whenever we are implementing using array array index always starts from 0 so because the array index starts from 0 so if the size of my stack is n then the maximum indices can go from stack 0 to stack n minus 1 so that is the reason why the array indices so it is given max minus 1 here max means the size stack is of size max so if the top element is pointing at the last maximum size of the stack it will be reporting me an overflow if that is not so then wherever is top so initially because our uh, top is zero then for us the top will be pointing to some maybe you can start from minus 1 while you are implementing the program you can start from a minus 1 So now when I insert the first element, first it increments. So the value instead of minus one, it becomes zero. So my top is here, and I simply put the value. So maybe I want to insert a hundred here. So where will be my top? My top will be pointing here. 
See, the increment part is happening before I insert a value. Because see, if next time I want to insert, so my first value which I've inserted is 100. The next value I want to insert is 50. So what happens is that after you insert the first element, top is equals to 0 because my array index starts from 0. Now, if this incrementation is done after this, then what happens? Top starts pointing to 1. So it starts pointing to a location which is still unoccupied. So we do not want to implement it like that. We have kept it very simple. Top will be initially pointing to minus 1. So when we first insert the first element, we will increment it, make it 0 and insert the element. So top is now equals to 0. Next time when we want to insert 50, top value will become 1. And we will insert the element in this location 50. And then top will no longer remain here. Top will move to this location which is now, because we are implementing it using arrays, so you can understand that memory locations are continuous in nature. So, we need not worry about it. Now, usually stack is represented in this fashion from button to top. But as we know, the array representation is in, we usually do it like this. So, what happens is that this is my zero. This is my first index. This is my second index and so on it goes on till max. So here for at first 100 will be inserted. So here I first insert 100 and then I insert 50. So when I insert a 50, my top is at this location. Again, when I try to insert another element 60, so top so suppose now I want to insert the value 60. So at first what becomes top will be incremented and top will be pointing to this location. Index 2 and then 60 will be inserted. So this process goes on like this. So this is a push operation if you are implementing the stack using an array. Now, what will be the complexity if we are talking about the insertion algorithm? Now, because the insertion takes place and only at one end of the stack. So, if you are looking at this form of array, because it happens only at the last position. So, in this case, the complexity is order of one. Because we have already seen that in case of array, if we are inserting at the end of the array, the complexity is always order of one. And because in case of stack, the insertion always happens at the end, so it is order of one. Now let us look at the deletion algorithm. In case of the deletion algorithm, the input will naturally be the stack and the output will be the stack after the top element has been removed. Now, this operation is typically known as a pop operation. So you can write it as a pop. Now, in case of deletion, we know that we have to check for the underflow condition. So let us see by this example when the underflow will happen. So let us start from step two, val equals to stack top. So as I told, the removal always happens from the top element. So here val will be equals to stack top. So what is stack top value? Top value is 2. Now remember that top does not represent the element. Top represents the top pointer or the top counter. So this is very important. So note. So when we are talking, so don't get confused by what is meant by top. So top means top is the counter in case of array. 
and the pointer in case of linked list so this is very important top doesn't represent the element itself rather it indicates the position so we can talk like top is the position where the insertion or deletion will take place so this is very important so don't get confused so here if i am talking that stack top so this is my stack what is the top value top is equals to 2 here so here top is equals to 2 so what is there in stack to 60 so 60 gets popped out so it gets popped out that means this position becomes empty so this is no more there this is out so 60 is out and top will move from this location so in uh, in this case also it will be moving so stack becomes one element less and top comes here which is equals to one again is it equals to null now see this is the impact of top equals to null that means we are checking whether top is pointing to a location or pointing to a index which is not existing now top equals to 1 now in case of insertion we started from top equals to minus 1 so when we are deleting and because we are decrementing the pointer like this so initially it will be 2 then 1 then 0 and after that when we delete this element also top becomes minus 1 so after we have deleted this element and this element so when we have deleted this element then stack top value is undefined because top value is then equals to minus 1 because we are decrementing it so this is the condition for the null and whenever top is equals to minus 1 that means the array is empty and there is nothing to be deleted and that becomes the underflow condition so in case of insertion the incrementation first take place and then the value is inserted in case of deletion first the value is deleted what is meant by deletion because in case of array deletion is simply showing the value which is at the top of the stack so we are taking the top of the stack element and putting it in some val and which is ultimately returned so if we talk about the implementation then in this part we can also write instead of writing it to be the array stack we can also write it to be the value top value of the element so we can also write it the the top element of stack so either way you can write it because ultimately it is going to return you the value which is at the top of the stack now again if we talk about the complexity now because you see that in this case also the complexity will be similar to the insertion case because it is taking place only at one end that is from the end of the array So this is what the deletion always takes place from the end. So what happens? The complexity is equal to order of one because we have already seen if the deletion is at the end of the stack, then it is order of one. Again, don't get confused by deletion. Here, deletion means just overwriting that space with some zero or something like that. but when we are talking about a stack what happens is that it simply returns a value which is at the top of the stack that is what the deletion is because array locations cannot be deleted like that if we are implementing it using a static memory allocation so now this ends the deletion part let us go and check now the pick operation that is displaying the top element of the stack now if we talk about the pick operation so this is pick so we can also write this function to be pick 
and input will be the stack and the output will be the top element of the stack now the top element like in case of a uh, deletion operation we have to check whether the stack is empty or not and when does that happens if top value becomes equals to minus 1 now here instead of null you can also write a minus 1 that's perfectly fine because array indices always starts from zero we know so if you write a minus 1 also it is perfectly all right for your algorithm so we have to check whether top is equals to 1 if it is top minus 1 means the list is empty so there is nothing to display otherwise we simply return the stack top element so in this case it will be returning me 50 so this ends the implementation and the okay and the complexity will be order of 1 because we are simply printing the value so there is nothing we are doing it's a constant time operation so order of 1 this ends my lecture this lecture on the array implementation of stack and what is stack and what are the properties of stack in the next lecture we are going to see how can we we will be doing this three operations push pop and p using the linked list data structure thank you